thank you so much for being here. You had your talk yesterday about links. Uh, I watched your React Summit talk and I was very impressed. I felt for the for the first time in a few years, I felt that working with plain React Native felt sort of oldish with all the stuff that you're inventing at links. And also, I think when you introduced BTS, I, I, I feel more people should have laughed. It's like, I don't, I don't know, people don't get it. I didn't get the reference when she told me that this is... A um, K-pop band. Yeah. A boys band, yeah. Did, did you have that in mind when you created the acronym? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a happy accident. Yeah, it's an accident. We actually started from MTS because that's the new concept. But then we need to find something in that side. And BTS. Yeah, it's it's just a funny fun, fun, yeah. Yeah. I googled you a little bit and I saw you were in Paris this year at Roland Garros. Yeah. So I have one uh, question for sort of a warm-up, but not very technical. Who's your favorite tennis player and why is it Iga Shantek? <laughs> I will also accept Kamil Mike Shark and Hubert Hurkacz. The, these are also acceptable answers. So it's actually Federer. It's a, it's a boring okay. answer. Sorry about that. Huh? But I play single-handed back end. That's why. Oh. So Federer, okay. definitely the most elegant tennis player in the history. Okay. And you play yourself as well. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, we're, we're, we are warmed up. Let's let's move on to technology. Then. Yeah. So, like, I want to start at the beginning, at the beginning of the community understanding of links. So, it was February this year, a few months ago. You announced it with the bank, really. Yeah. You teased us for a week with all of those different, like, thank you, React, thank you, yeah. Cordova, I think, all of that. And then you dropped the whole ecosystem of platform tools with links, re- links, React, Prim.js, all, all of that connected together. I want to like hear your perspective of what it took from you and your team to prepare for that launch. And then what was the community reaction? How many messages did you get from what kinds of communities? <laughs> That's a very good question. So um, the appreciation parts, like the Twitter thread, it's very spontaneous activity from one of our engineer manager, Ray, uh, he's also the team leader for the Ars Pack project. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you uh, heard of that, it's one of the open source projects that we launched earlier. Um, so I feel like both personally and from the team perspective, we really appreciate the open source community for you know, all the invention from PhoneGap to Codewa to React to Flutter to Chromium because we draw a lot of inspiration from them. So we'd be like, we want to give a message that we're not really competing here, but rather uh, we want to contribute by giving back some of the creation mm-hmm. that we built from the inspiration from those and hopefully to give the community some more inspiration. So that's like the message we want to send. And that's why we start from give a kind of tribute to all those great innovation that has been so critical to this industry and especially our field, I would say UI programming and mm-hmm. uh, web and uh, React mobile apps. And it, it, this appreciation is really, uh, I, I like how you show it a lot. Even during your talk, you mentioned how you were inspired by worklets or Preact. So uh, that's that, that's really, really good atmosphere to put out there that we're sort of working together on different things and getting inspired one, one by uh, another. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a, uh, I, I spoke about it on the live stream already and at, at some talks when I explored l- links on the very team surface that I understand it right now, uh, that there is a bunch of possibilities to cross-pollinate between React Native and React and uh, and Links.js. Yeah. Yeah, what kinds of uh, ideas do you have that you can either borrow from React Native to Links or contribute back to broader React uh, ecosystem? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I would say uh, Links is kind of like, a, I was a React Native as a direct source of inspiration of Links. So in the sense, everything from React Native we've learned from the creation of that, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so that's one part. Uh, but then we wanted to not just copy something and call that a day. We want to mm-hmm. actually think, well, is there anything we can change to make it a bit better for, you know, some of the use cases we encountered and hopefully uh, other businesses and other team may possibly run into those issues as well. And since we already started to think about those and maybe we have solution that we can contribute back. So that's those, uh, that are some of the 
um, the parts I feel like links can contribute back to the React and React Native community or web community uh, at large. Mm -hmm. uh, one kind of killer feature I would say like people are really happy about is that links supports CSS natively. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. Yes, that's something that's very impressive. Yeah, so it's really something organic because when we try to adopt React Native and many other similar cross platform technology within Bydance, we realize people still largely want to write CSS, especially mm -hmm. when they are migrating yeah. gradually from like, existing web code base. Right. Yeah. So what if they can just port those CSS files without writing, you know, completely yeah. different uh, uh, yeah. recreating that design yeah, system. It's, yeah, it's definitely a pain point if you're trying to migrate that you have to work out your stuff. So, right. so that, that that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, in the old days, I would say React Native is not super good at being hybrid and embedded with native UI. So you have a list, long recycling list, mm -hmm. and part of them are native UI mm -hmm. and part of them are React Native. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit hard to synchronize between those because of the uh, a lot of different uh, mm -hmm. constraints of multi-text writing. Uh, so that's another thing that we feel like uh, we try to do a little bit modification of links to have this two thread. So uh, the uh, instant, uh, so, so that you can have rendering and uh, interactivity on the main thread, so mm -hmm. it's easier to coordinate. Yeah. Uh, do you already have some success stories or like case studies of people trying out links and building their own products with it, or not even products, but demo apps and like just giving you feedback about what they observe and like what is the state of the community right now? Yeah, first of all, I think we're pretty young. We're like open source for six months. And there are a lot of things that we have in the open source and still heavily preparing, uh, like more UI components and navigation solutions. But yeah, they're definitely a successful story. Uh, so for person, relatively personal projects, um, we uh, just finished the, it's called TikTok, Tepchen. It's a hackathon mm -hmm. uh, for Singapore university students. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Right. And we were trying to um, find those. Uh, so one of the projects I'm really excited about is to, it's open source. I, I can probably post a link later. It's called, oh yeah, yeah, please send it to us. We're yeah. going to link it in the show notes. Yeah. So, so a lot, first of all, a lot of students are doing amazing projects mm -hmm. with, with links, but the, the very notable uh, top ones are trying to combine privacy technologies, mm -hmm. like how, how to uh, use AI to detect if a photo uh, is l licking some of the personal information, like your face, your oh, yeah, the tags, okay. your uh, location information, okay. and they build a app with links to do that. So That's, this is very, wow. Yeah. That sounds like a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. uh, but we were talking yesterday about links, and you, uh, you mentioned that you're interested in how uh, it's not only React. Right? Yes. And we were discussing that yesterday. So like links, like I said, is a whole family of technologies and links react being like the first and like most public and most used UI layer on top of links engine. I, I can say that. Yeah. But also like y you have support and you mentioned in your docs that more than half of the code base that runs at ByteDance is actually not written in React links, but in Links View or Links uh, Svelte. Svelte. Can you talk more about that? Okay. So, first of all, just to clarify, uh, Links View and Links Svelte is more like a community-driven project that we, after we open source links and we uh, trying to give the message that the links engine and the platform is being framework agnostic, then uh, the view community and the, the spell community started to get excited about and try oh, to incorporate okay. their JavaScript framework into this cross-platform engine so they can mm -hmm. um, uh, kind of share this cross-platform success that we already enjoyed for 10 years with yeah. React Native, right? Mm -hmm. um, but for the internal half uh, 50 percent usage of things uh, it's something different uh, it's well I can I can tell you a little bit more about like make a little bit more about it so yeah. uh, you know in the Chinese market there is something called mini app there's a lot oh, yeah. of super apps there right and mini app actually represent wow it's 
I don't know, ninety percent usage of the kind of the the products built by web like technologies. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Uh, so um Links also supports that behind the scene. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's cool. That's mysterious. I want to know more. Probably you can't share a, a yeah. bunch of that. But yeah, so I stand corrected. What I read in the docs is not that Vue and Svelte are powering the other 50%. The The equation is the, the other way around, that React is not powering. Uh, yeah, they're 50%. just platform agnostic. Yeah. Framework agnostic, you said. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a nice term that a lot of people like. Um I um, really like the idea of uh, the double, the two threads. It's it's incredible. It, it got me uh, very interested. And um, as I know, most of you maybe know, you are also one of the people behind React Forget, <laughs> uh, right? You, you did the talk in 2021. So I sort of put those two things together because right now you have BTS, MTS, and uh, everything is on BTS, right? And then you can declare your MTS. So. Like I started thinking, do you see a future where you would have something like a compiler, like a Lynx compiler that would make the decision for the developers? Because right now you let people decide. So they can mess up, they can put everything on a main thread on main thread and break their app and they'll be angry. Do you see a future where you'll have some tooling that will decide what goes where? Yeah. I think there are two parts of this uh mm-hmm. question. First, uh thanks for mentioning Ray, I forgot. It's, Definitely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, Thank you for participating in that effort. Yeah. So uh, the goal of the React Forget, and nowadays we call it React Compiler, right, mm-hmm. is mostly to optimize the rendering performance, uh, especially the memorization part. We, mm-hmm. for instance, it's a, it's a big burden if you think about how to write React code with with those many memorization. Uh, well, and furthermore, uh, we and and also like the React team who is is running this pleasure. Um, they were thinking about further advance the model to be fully reactive, to uh, be on par with some of the other reactive frameworks like Swell, so that you don't need to write uh, dependencies for use effect. Right? So, mm-hmm. so basically, the React forget a compiler project is to optimize your authoring of React code uh, so that um, it has better developer experience and mm-hmm. it's faster by default. So, uh, that layer with that abstraction is, I would say, orthogonal or additional to, to what Lynx is doing. So we are actually internally experimenting, incorporating React compiler to React Lynx as well. And okay. there are some like edge cases, but like we. Because you're using Preact and it might not play nicely with it. Right. Because th- that was yeah. the thing that I was surprised about when you released in uh, February. When I saw that you use React 17, is it? <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry about uh, kind of create some confusion about the Preag React 17 and and the, the brand name of React Lens. Maybe some that's something we can do better in the future. Uh, but the broader idea is that when I think about React, also that's how I think about React when I'm uh, exploring the. Uh, React forget in React compiler project is a React. Even though there is like a official implementation that mm-hmm. is uh, originally created by Meta, but mm-hmm. then uh, expanded to this mm-hmm. whole community. Uh, but also React as a programming model. You can you can pretty much think about what if there is like a React specification, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, something like JavaScript specification, yeah. the ACMA okay. two sixty two. Then there could be different implementation of that same oh, specification, wow. and they. Okay supposedly can be compatible with each other, yeah. they are conformed to with that spec- specification, yeah. right? Yeah. So in that sense, Preact, you can think about it, um, it's a compliant implementation to the React 17 spec. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why, well, of course... That's that why you mentioned the 17. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I get it now. Yeah. That, that's why uh, the React compiler is built on top of the idea that React is a hypothetic programming language for mm-hmm. UI. So it's compiled, uh, it's compiling your code at the level of React APIs, like function component and hooks mm-hmm. and use effect and that kind of thing. So if the Preact code looks like the same React code, even though the implementation of the runtime is different, 
the semantics and the syntax is the same, so the compiler can still behave correctly. And that's how we think about React links being, I would say, another implementation, but as well as a expanded programming model by adding the do threadiness mm. to the React spec or React programming model. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I was going to ask you if you follow closely the development of React Compiler, but from your answer <laughs> right now, I feel like you, you do follow it very closely. And I feel we're just scratching the surface. But oh, yeah, we'll we... definitely talk more during yes. the, the conference. And you are so active on Twitter. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, I encourage everyone to check out the docs and yes. check out the examples from Link's page. Those are amazing. Okay. I want to say one last thing. Like, Link's.js, like you said, is the even though we live in this like very energized community, mm -hmm. this was the most exciting thing that I've seen in a while yeah, in our same. React yeah. Universe space. Yeah. So thank you so much for thank creating you. this. Thank yeah. you for saying that. And thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs>